Relegation in college football, well, it may seem like a crazy idea for you, but today we're going to be joined by Eric Pitzer from No Bowls to explain why it might be just the best thing that could happen to college football. And welcome to an episode of Sound Off, a web extra, a conversation about relegation in college football. Eric Pitzer from No Bowls joins us. So a lot of traction over the last couple of days on the topic of relegation, Eric. Uh, this has been something you've been uh, really championing for a number of years, uh, both during your coverage of the SEF days with No Bowls and now as you're looking at it from a G5 perspective. Um, talk about the concept. I know it's something that has obviously gained a lot of traction uh, and is something that is loved by fans in the English Premier League. Why would this work for college football and how do you think it could be something that could be applied uh, across the landscape? Well, let's get, there's there's two there's two two different distinct things here. There's there's the one thing, the piece I, I, I wrote almost 10 years ago now and, and played out, which was a full-fledged look. You know, it was fantastic you know it's fantasy that's not going to happen and then there's what is going on right now with the mountain west and the pack two um which we'll get to in a second that could be based in some reality but yes it's it, fans there is no doubt that fans love promotion and relegation um for many financial reasons uh you won't see that in major college football or even you know things like the mls right now um where people have been clamoring for promotion and relegation um you're not going to see it because no one none of not all the stakeholders want to open themselves up to any kind of risk and that that's going to be that's going to be the the biggest the biggest hurdle uh of actually getting it going so what i did what i did you know years ago in this exercise was, okay what if we just reimagine because this is more for fun what if we reimagine college football so i took all the teams at all the different levels and put them into different geographic tiers or geographic regions, and then into four different tiers based on, and then I used real data from NCAA seasons across FBS, FCS, division two and three, or not, I didn't, I didn't go all the way down to three. Um, uh, using like the, the Massey ratings, which incorporates all, you know, performance across all the divisions and you kind of, and you got to see, okay, you know, teams like North Dakota State, they they were up in the top tier in no time and competing, you know, with the best. And, you know, I remember there were the other teams like Kansas had some awful years and they ended up down in like the tier three. So that was that was just more of an exercise in fun. That was an exercise in fun. Okay, what, what might this look like in a u utopian uh, college football landscape? But yesterday, uh, Ross Dellinger, Yahoo Sports, came out with a piece where he's been talking to uh, – some people off the record in the mountain west and in the, the group of five and right now we have a very real uh timely issue where the pac-12 you know they're on they're on life support like there's you know starting next year it's going to be just oregon state and washington state so they have to end up somewhere i mean something is going to happen <laughs> and that might be and right now the pac-12 for better or for worse still has you know, still has assets, still has money, still has brand recognition. Um, I love seeing that the Pac-12 this season is doing just amazingly in football. I think it's hilarious. Uh, so there's still a lot of a lot of brand power right now. So his discuss his his um, his conversations with some of those uh, administrators was that for the first time. I, this is the first time I think I remember hearing it ever from like an actual actual administrators is the idea of promotion and relegation being tossed around as a way for the the two remaining pac 12 teams and the mountain west teams to kind of combine and just just in their league you know so maybe the pac 12 will be the top tier mountain west will be the bottom tier and then have them have them uh, go through as a you know as a chance for survival and i think that that's the first time we're getting a you know, there's some actual smoke of, you know, could this start something? Yeah. And what was really interesting about the article is it indicated it would actually be a really creative way for both leagues to keep both their NCAA plans and their revenue contracts and TV deals with their existing conferences. And, and something you've, you've brought up on a number of cages, and, and I know it's been well chronicled in, in documentaries on English Premier League football and others, is that this is a great way to create excitement, not only for fan bases throughout um, your your different levels of college football, but also potentially some increased TV interest from those TV networks to say, look, if you're a team that's in the, the bottom of one of these power conferences and you're facing relegation, your fan base, your viewers are going to be very interested in doing everything in your capacity to keep you from dropping down. And then 
you're an FCS team, let's use North Dakota State as an example, or South Dakota State or Montana. Some of these programs are Delaware, who's who's now getting into the discussion about wanting to move up to FBS. And you have a couple of really solid years. You have the opportunity to make that jump and continue that growth. And it's going to encourage more donations, sponsorship, investment into these programs on all levels. And I just think that that excitement and that energy, as well as keeping complacency out of those programs, is one of the more exciting things I could possibly imagine for the group of five level, uh, as well as FCS and potentially even the P5 conferences, because that you're going to get more casual viewers paying attention uh, to what might happen. And I know that's been something that's been very successful for, once again, European soccer. Well, and that's what I want to see is uh, we don't, we just, there is no, there's no precedent for here. There's not, it hasn't happened in anywhere. And as far as, you know, maybe some North American minor leagues, yeah. uh, you know, have something in place, but I think the potential is there personally. I mean, I, I love it. I, every time er, anyone I talk to seems, oh yeah, that would be great. But it, you know, it's, it's a common trip. Oh, that'd be great, but it'll never happen. Yeah. Well, here's a chance to actually have, it play out where, and even in this scenario, the, the, the problem with it is there's always going to be someone either has to take a risk or be the ones that say, well, this puts us in a bad position. You know, so like, for example, you could easily do it with the G5 and the power five teams. You could create a scenario where the Sun Belt goes up to the SEC or the American goes up to the ACC and they bring yeah. a team down. The problem with that is if you're Vanderbilt in the SEC, you're never going to agree to that because <laughs> you're sitting pretty with no risk. And you, you or if you're Virginia laugh. were to apply that model to the ACC in the Sun Belt, you're Virginia, Virginia Tech, you're suddenly looking about finding yourself maybe in the Sun Belt or the American or one of these conferences based on those head-to-head matchups. However, iron sharp, sharp sharpens iron. And if you're one of those programs that has maybe fallen on harder times, I know this is a fantasy world, but it could motivate and push your programs to do more. And obviously that back and forth competition, we all know in this landscape where it takes 40 years for JMU and, and UVA to play, because of some of the main conversations we're talking about now with the ACC commissioner saying, don't even schedule these Sunbelt programs going forward off these types of games. It, it is a little bit of fantasy league, but it is the type of discussion that I think is really cool to see as now all the focus, obviously on what Deion Sanders is doing in Colorado, um, the conference realignment shuffling that that's bringing teams into leagues. We never thought possible. Yeah. It is at least serving as a catalyst or a new way of looking at college athletics. And as there's a continued push to uh, maintain relevancy, uh, especially among younger fans, and to maintain those ties into those TV networks, streaming networks, it at least, I think, opens the door for maybe some creativity, which I think the sport is desperately in need of. Yeah, well, that's what I'm hoping to see if if, if this were to, you know, to play out. And then if it's a successful, you know, let's, let's just, let's play the what if game. Let's say the pack, Pack two in the Mountain West, they figure out a way to uh, the way their schools, you know, because there's going to be schools in the middle of the Mountain West that which side are they going to fall on initially? No one wants to be the one at the yeah. bottom. They all, you know, they want to be at the top. So right all of a sudden you got it. You have your first hurdle you have to get over. But I think if a scenario, let's say a scenario that does play out and it gets a lot of attention and is successful, then I think you have to start to think of things from, well, I don't want to do this because it's risky versus we can't afford not to take the risk. Cause you see some of the, you know, and you don't, no one wants to be the, the teams like, like Washington state, Oregon state, where you're just kind of left holding back because you weren't proactive about it. Um, and you have this chance to really, really create something special. I think, you know, I, I think if we're talking realistically, I think this would probably have to be something that would maybe break off into a football only uh, yeah. situation. I, I'm, I don't know how that would work with all sports. If you, if you could do it, there's, you know, there's so many, there's so many details you'd have to work out, but it'd be, be fun to work out. And then I always, I mean, I go back to schools like Cal and Stanford leaving for the ACC. Like, I don't think that's not sustainable. I don't think, I don't think we're going to see a, those schools stay in those programs at all. Maybe, maybe again, maybe in football only, but I think common sense will, come back at, at, at some point. I think that, you know, that one's always on all the conference realignment moves, the UCLA to USC do it. That was the first one that maybe, okay, this is too far. This is ridiculous. Um, so maybe we are at a good point now where we're going to see some of these, some of these, you know, cool ideas like promotion and relegation actually start to have a little bit of traction uh, and, and play out into something that's, that's fun for the viewers and creates, you know, creates that those those you know we the tv tv networks control that you get those eyes on the 
on the yeah, broadcast. Yeah. And what I would say is, is, if anything has been proven true over the past couple of years, is that money talks. And if this conversation starts to gain traction and TV executives see the value and start throwing around the idea of you know larger payouts to these universities, I think anything's possible. I go to something like the NBA. Who would have ever thought that there would be a mid-season tournament in the NBA? And that's because they're trying to drive um, numbers yeah. uh, to try to to try to encourage more people to view this, not just for the playoffs. I know the NHL is now having conversations uh, about a mid-season tournament. Um, there have been discussions about increasing the number of uh, outdoor winter classic style games across the league, all about, once again, not only keeping your passionate fans engaged, but trying to have more hooks uh, to bring in casual fans to keep TV viewership numbers relevant in this world where more and more people on a daily basis are disconnecting. Uh, so you do have more players in the space, more types of conversations like this on new platforms that opens up the door for maybe a new way of looking at sports. Uh, and I think it's an exciting conversation. This is why we want to bounce around. Maybe leave it on this though. I'm just curious if we're going to apply it to the Sun Belt, maybe in the East coast uh, for fans of JMU, what could be some possible scenarios in a fun world where nothing was off limits? Would you love to see from a relegation perspective on this side of the G5 landscape? Yeah, I mean, we already do it. We already group them into P5 and G5. So, you know, and then obviously, you know, you have FCS. So it's all, almost already naturally just in our conversations tiered yeah. like this. Um, I think what I mentioned before, had just lining up those those five conferences with the other five conferences. And if you finish last in the SEC, you're going down to the Sun Belt. And if you finish first, you know, you're, you're, you're going up you're to the SEC. The FCS, <laughs> you bring the FCS schools back into the mix and suddenly our rivalries with Richmond and William & Mary and Furman and all these other schools that we used to have some fun with in the FCS world suddenly become relevant again. Uh, and I actually think that's where you get the injection of energy and passion into those programs. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you're Richmond sitting there or Delaware uh, or Towson or any of these who you're able to put together a couple of really good seasons and good recruiting classes. Suddenly your program goes from, I mean, on the complete outskirts of the college football conversation to one of the more relevant uh, programs in the country at that point. It, it, it's almost like the Cinderella model of the NCAA basketball tournament is you get a UMBC. Suddenly everyone in America knows who UMBC is because they're now on the cusp of moving up into a top conference. And I think, uh, again, if fans drove the bus, we'd see. All Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Uh, well, hey, everything just like. With the college football playoff, you know, everything just takes these, you know, for small incremental steps. You know, they started with the BCS and then, you know, then you have that transitioned into the 14 playoff. And now next year we're going to get this awesome 12 team playoff. Um, so I think maybe is this the first stone Who knows? that that leads to some more promotion and relegation college football? I hope so. Well, Eric, uh, I know the no bulls conversation will continue. So for people watching us who aren't familiar with your site, how can they learn more about no bulls and uh, what kind of content do you have upcoming for this season? Yeah. So, I mean, I, no bulls right now. I'm just on, on just on Twitter. We update the website um, towards more towards the end of the end of the college football season with bracket projections, but uh, started it 15 years ago, really just as a, a fan of football that wasn't exhibition bowl games, real playoffs. Um, so I started as FCS bracketology um, but now we're expanding just a little slightly out into now that there's, especially with the expanded playoff next year, uh, moving a little bit more into um, kind of into, I, I guess, would be that that G5 um, G5 focus along with along with continuing to do the FCS bracketology and really just having a, a pulse on on some of these teams that are off the national radar um, and, and, you know, getting those rankings into place and, you know, finding those you know those cinderellas too i think that's a, that's a big part of the storyline that's why promotion relegation fits in i think so well with with the whole reason i started this was to kind of talk about having your results on the field be the ones that mean anything and not just you know money from a some bit some big suits and executives <laughs> uh, eric what's the uh the web address and where can they follow you on social media uh at nobles on twitter or x i guess and uh nobles.com Awesome. This has been a sound off web extra, a conversation about relegation. If you like what you see here, um, leave below what you would like to see in relegation. I'll leave it in the comments. We'll feature it on some future podcasts, but as always, we'll see you this week after our game against Utah state, a Monday night podcast, as we recap the Duke's uh, hopeful win over Utah state and look forward to our next home game against South Alabama. Thanks for joining us again. You're listening to sound off and we'll see you next week.